let me tell you right now what you're about to stop doing by the time you're done watching this video. You're going to stop letting the world control your life. Stop letting things outside of yourself dictate what happens to you and how you feel about your life. Hola beautiful souls, welcome back or welcome to my channel. This is a safe space on the internet where we blend the cosmos with self-development using astrology, spirituality, and wellness and turning it into educational and lifestyle content so we can become our highest selves. If that sounds like something you're interested in, don't forget to stick around and subscribe so you don't miss future videos like this one. If you are interested in learning when my books open back up for chart readings and appointments, be sure that you subscribe to my newsletter by going to the link in my description to my website. My website will have all of your needs when it comes to subscribing to the newsletter, looking at when I have appointment availability open up, etc. Today's video is all about reclaiming your power and getting back in touch with your intuition. Originally, I had had videos set up already to release during the winter season that are more like dark astrology type videos because I consider all of winter and fall to be the dark season. So it's kind of fun to dive into the more shadow aspects of life. But it goes without saying that the world is a little bit crazy. I mean, life is always crazy. However, I feel like things have felt extra charged. So I felt intuitively called to release videos that were a little bit more warm and reassuring and hopefully inspirational. Whatever you may be feeling, I hope you walk out of this video with more clarity and more self-confidence, more confidence in your ability to control your life despite what's happening externally. My first tip to start reclaiming your power and getting back in touch with your intuition is to stop believing everything you read and consume, especially on the internet. Recognize that most people that are on the internet are not actually professionals or certified or even properly educated in the subjects that they speak on. Even though the internet has provided a beautiful space to spread awareness and knowledge on so many things that we would not otherwise have been exposed to if we were living before the digital age. However, everything has a pro and a con, and the downside to the internet can be that anybody has a voice. Anybody can get on the internet and say something, and if it gets enough views, the views are considered certification. The views are considered a qualification for that person's professionalism. Not only does it give people a voice that maybe we shouldn't be listening to, and a lot of times we shouldn't be listening to these people, but it also increases this bandwagon herd mentality where people are like, oh, everybody else is believing it, so I guess I should too. The internet has really damaged our sense of discernment and our ability to use common sense and use critical thinking to figure out what might be true, what may not be true, what is misleading, what is actually educational, what is beneficial, what is not. And our minds get so filled with things that are not worth our energy. Not only are they not worth our energy, but they are skewing our sense of self and our own perception of the world. The internet is so full of differing opinions and whereas differing opinions are a beautiful thing because they are necessary for us to empathize, sympathize, and understand another person in order to grow our own perception of the world. It's taken us away from our own opinions. What do we believe? What are our values? And we're being encouraged to be heavily influenced and almost brainwashed by people who don't even know what they're talking about. So the first thing to recognize is how easily influenced are you becoming when you spend time on the internet and in everyday life? I am focusing on the internet when it comes to this tip, but this is relevant to everyday life as well. Even if you don't believe everything you read and consume, to try and constantly process that amount of information and that amount of energy because it's still an energetic exchange. Social media is an energetic exchange, whether it feels like it or not. Just because you're not in front of another person, you are still using energy and exchanging energy with those that you are consuming and interacting with on the internet. So one of my biggest pieces of advice to start reclaiming your power when it comes to this is to take digital breaks. 
It may seem super straightforward. It may seem like, yeah, dumber. So we've heard this a million times. <laughs> well, I'm telling you a million and one times. My body starts to feel physically anxious and tense whenever I spend too much time consuming everything on social media. You know when you drink too much caffeine and the caffeine starts making you feel like you're vibrating and you can't calm down? It's a similar feeling when I'm over consuming and feeling overstimulated by the internet. I have trained myself to recognize that feeling and the moment I'm feeling that, I put the phone away. In the same realm as that piece of advice is to become grounded in the present moment in your life. It may, once again, sound cliche, but it is just the truth. Become present. We are constantly getting swept up in these narratives that we see online. We're getting distracted by them. We are also being swept up in national and global news that is not even affecting our everyday lives. Whereas it is beautiful that we are able to be aware of what is happening and potentially help places and events that may not have had our help otherwise. Recognize where this is damaging you because most of the time, a lot of the things that we are being fearful of and anxious about don't even affect us on a daily basis. That is anything at this present moment, which this present moment is the only thing that exists, by the way, is anything in this present moment happening to you? Or are you assuming the position that something has already happened to you because you're assuming that something is going to happen and you're becoming extra fearful and anxious and avoidant because of that. This is what is dangerous about the constant consumption of things outside of ourselves. When all we can truly control at the end of the day is ourselves, our internal world and how we take care of it. And the first step of taking care of that is being more grounded in the present moment and not being so overly consumed by social media and everything happening outside of us. And not only is that good for you, it creates a domino effect energetically. When you are taking care of yourself and you are not fear mongering, you're not spreading anxiety, you're not spreading hate and anger based on what's happening outside of you, you become a vessel of love. And even though it can seem hopeless to be a vessel of love and it can seem pointless in this world, you create a ripple effect. These small things are truly the building blocks that stack into something, they stack into a structure that actually makes a difference. If you've decided already that there's no hope, then you are right. You're right, because that's what you have decided. You haven't even tried to give yourself a chance to reclaim your power and take control of your life and therefore create a ripple effect that encourages others and influences others in a positive way to do the same and then it continues again it's a ripple so stop believing everything you read and consume on the internet and on tv step away from all of your digital devices frequently especially recognizing when your body is overstimulated and being affected by what you're consuming and be present. Building your discernment, building the trust you have in yourself and your own knowledge and not letting things outside of yourself be your boss. Be the thing that dictates your life and dictates your energy and your success. My second piece of advice is to make active efforts to respond to your body's needs, not your brain's. Piggybacking off of the last tip that I gave, in today's society, we are a lot more encouraged by all of our habits and everything around us and just the way that we're brought up in society. We are encouraged to use our brain far more than our body. And because we glamorize the mind and we put way too much emphasis on the mind in today's society, we have created so much distance and detachment from our bodies that we don't even trust our bodies. Your primal instinct is your first reaction to everything. It is the source, it is the foundation of everything. And we have so vastly disconnected from it. And that is one of the reasons that you don't trust yourself and you're more willing to be influenced by and educated by someone who is not qualified to be telling you what to do with your life or telling you what to think. We as a society are a lot more lost because of this detachment from our body. It is essential 
that you take the time and put the intention into getting closer to your body once again, getting closer to that primal instinct, to that instinctual gut urge that you have in your life that you have been ignoring or second guessing because your mind is winning. Now, the chakra connected to this gut instinct is the solar plexus chakra. This is one of the lower chakras that connects us to our body and to that instinct within our body that I'm referring to. And the reason this is important is because we don't realize a lot of times that we have energetic blockages happening within us. And there are things we can actually do to encourage the flow of that energy center once again. With the solar plexus chakra specifically, this chakra is connected to the element of fire. Fire is the physical body, physical movement, physical energy and vitality. So in order to start reigniting that chakra and to feed energy into it and to reconnect to your body is to actually move your body, exercise, do things that reconnect you to it. I personally believe that yoga is one of the most powerful ways to not only reconnect with this energy center, but to reconnect with your entire body because yoga is a mindful movement. It's a movement that ignites your body. It warms it up. It burns calories, but you're forced to connect to it. You're forced to breathe into the movements and to be mindful of the movements. And this is another beautiful way to reconnect with the present moment as well, which ties into my previous tip. So I highly recommend yoga for your choice of physical exertion and movement in order to reignite this chakra and start reconnecting you to your body. The third piece of advice that I have is to take time to explore different creative hobbies, passions, and new environments. The biggest reason that I suggest doing this ties again into the previous tip when it comes to reconnecting to your body. But instead of reconnecting specifically to that primal instinct that runs through our veins, we're reconnecting to the sacral chakra specifically. The sacral chakra is the energy center associated with everything creative, manifestation, feminine, sensual energy, etc. Number one is engaging the senses through creative hobbies, fun activities, nourishing self-care activities, and getting out and exploring. And one of my favorite ways that I have been getting in touch with that more sensual side of myself and really engaging the senses is through how I express myself physically. And that's why I am so excited for today's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. They are a carbon neutral, sustainable jewelry brand from New York that focuses on affordable luxury pieces. They are having their biggest sale right now of the entire year where you can get up to 35% off super beautiful pieces. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the pieces that I received recently. I'm wearing these helix type earrings and I will show you a close up, but they are so beautiful. I love the way that they kind of look like I have maybe like a double piercing going on, but they appeal to the side of me that loves looking kind of like classy, but kind of edgy at the same time. This necklace is also what I received from Ana Luisa a few months back, and it still looks just as gorgeous as ever. And I have worn it nonstop <laughs> since I got it. They also sent me these beautiful little hoop earrings that actually have a star and a moon dangling from them. I love these earrings so much. I've been wearing these a lot and come on, like they fit my brand so well, but also I love the fact that they imbue a little bit of magic into my everyday life because that feeling of imbuing magic into your life and indulging that femininity and your senses. And Ana Luisa has the perfect pieces that not only fit the side of me that likes pieces that are more classy and more elegant, but at the same time, they can provide a little bit of edge to my look. One of the other pieces that I have worn constantly that I got from them is this moon pendant necklace. It is my favorite necklace to stack with the chain that I'm currently wearing because they look beautiful together. And I will insert clips of the last video <laughs> that I released like three or four months ago where I was wearing both of those pieces just stunning with me showing the pieces it goes without saying that Ana Luisa is literally the perfect way for you to treat yourself this holiday season 
and or treat a loved one this holiday season to forever jewelry pieces. So head there right now to the link in the description below to Ana Luisa and get up to 35% off your holiday orders on your forever jewelry. Thank you, Ana Luisa, again for sponsoring today's video. So reconnecting with this will not only reconnect you with your body, but it'll reconnect you to things that feed you in a positive way and feed your energy in a way that is empowering and fulfilling. And by doing that, you are reclaiming your power, especially over your own energy. And you're getting back in touch with things that resonate with your soul. So you're getting to know yourself. Essentially, when it comes to this tip, I want you to almost date yourself. Take yourself on creative dates, whether it's at home and you're learning how to paint, trying to draw and having like a nice warm beverage with it or whatever the case may be or whether you're getting back into hobbies that are not just creative but maybe nourishing maybe there's something you like to do that is nourishing it can even be taking a bubble bath that's not really a hobby i guess it's more so a healthy habit um, but anything that really engages your senses and that fire within you that spark. These are all things that essentially you want to engage the senses as much as you can. Get back in touch with the feeling of touching things, touching different textures, really taking them in, reconnecting with your breath, reconnecting with the way something makes your heart feel, reconnecting with the way your body feels with everything that you do. This is why going out to new places and new environments is so important because this also engages your senses in a different way and it awakens you to new perspectives. When you're constantly in the same routine day in and day out doing the same monotonous stuff every day and you see the same environments, the same people, it's uninspiring. So you're more likely to look to things such as the internet to find inspiration, which actually just ends up you going down a rabbit hole with an influencer that you're jealous of or that their life kind of makes you sad because your life is not like that stop letting yourself become morphed by whatever you're consuming get in touch with what you love my fourth tip to reclaim your power and get back in touch with your intuition is to explore shadow work to tap into your emotions emotional blockages are one of the biggest reasons that we start being detached from ourselves and we start allowing ourselves to be more easily influenced by the external world because we are not actually in touch with our emotions in a way that is healthy in a way that is productive in our lives and the chakra that is specifically correlated with emotional blockage is the heart chakra and i personally dealt with for a long period of time blockage in my heart chakra because i had dealt with so much trauma from a romantic relationship that I started to actually feel physical pain in my chest and I started to study on the heart chakra and learn more about how to open it up. And a lot of us are walking around with blocked heart centers because there are so many things in this world that affect us emotionally and mentally on a daily basis that we almost feel like we have to numb ourselves to be able to make it through. But you know how they say two wrongs don't make a right? Well, like two numbs don't make a healthy emotion. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is that everybody's walking around numb and detached and this is not serving us in a positive way whatsoever. Not only are we giving our power away because emotions are power, emotions are fuel. I'm able to do this and to speak to you guys in this way because I'm tapped into something I'm passionate about and something that is a driver for my emotions and a driver for that spark. So if you want to reconnect with yourself, reclaim your power, have more confidence in yourself and your position in life and dictate your life, you need to cultivate a healthy relationship to your emotions. And this may look different for everybody, but essentially bridging the gap between the lower chakras, which are the chakras that have more to do with the body, the body survival, and connecting it to the higher chakras. And those are the chakras connected to spiritual enlightenment. Again, this is heavily connected to us reconnecting not only to our own power, but our intuition. And our intuition is such a powerful tool in our lives. It is essential 
that we remain in touch with our intuition because this goes all the way back to the first tip that I gave when we talked about having more discernment when it comes to external influences in the world and not letting everything outside of you control your energy and dictate your life. Having the ability to tap into your intuition and follow your intuition is probably one of the most lethal things that you can do in your life. So it is essential that you work on tapping back into that. Now, how do you do that? When it comes to the heart chakra specifically, I found that for myself, doing specific meditations that focused a lot on my breathing and focused a lot on the visualization of unblocking the heart was very helpful for me. Because a lot of times we don't like meditation because we have to sit with ourselves and we have to sit with the emotions and the thoughts that make us highly uncomfortable. That is absolutely necessary. So for me personally, again, if you want to find other pieces of advice, you can do your own research, but my primary piece of advice to reconnect to your heart chakra and to open it back up and encourage that flow of energy again is through active meditation. So doing these meditations and visualizing your heart chakra opening or visualizing pleasant things for yourself, things that you love, dreams that you have, things that you're passionate about, reconnecting to that can work on opening your heart chakra. Not only will meditation potentially serve you in this way, but actually going out and opening your heart chakra through your actions in the world as well. Instead of holding back a compliment that you have towards somebody, give them that compliment. Don't be afraid to give a person a compliment. Even if they seem to receive it weird or they don't know what to say, that's because all of us are super awkward because we are not tapped into our emotions. <laughs> so don't take it offensively if they potentially receive it kind of oddly. It can definitely be because we are all kind of carrying ourselves in a way that is awkward and detached. So when somebody says something to us like that, that we aren't used to experiencing, we don't really know how to handle it or how to receive it or how to process it. And that goes into my next point. Be open to receiving love as well. If someone gives you a compliment, don't be like, oh, uh, no, like my hair doesn't look good today. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Receive it. Say, thank you so much. That means a lot. Just receive it. That is another way that you open your heart chakra. A lot of times when we're experiencing a blockage there, it's partially because we've closed ourselves off, not only from giving love, but receiving love. Show love to other people. Spend more time with people that matter to you. If you've been neglecting time with friends or you've been rejecting plans with people that might actually be good for you to spend time with, if people keep inviting you out and you keep rejecting because you're afraid of friendship, you're afraid of potentially finding a romantic interest, open yourself back up to those experiences. Take it little by little. Don't overwhelm yourself, but start slowly opening yourself back up to people. Maybe with your family too, spending more time with your family and feeding more energy into your loved ones. Those energetic exchanges with other people is very important to staying connected to our emotions and to our heart chakra specifically. Last but not least, reevaluate your dietary habits. It goes without saying, I think, that food is extremely important to our well being. However, what many don't realize is that the things we consume have a direct effect on our spiritual state as well. There is something called high prana and low prana foods. High prana foods are foods that essentially are. A in their whole state, their raw state, they have not been tampered with, they have not been processed, and because they have not been processed or tampered with, they are at their most raw, powerful state. Like an apple, for example, versus applesauce. Applesauce would be considered a low prana food. An apple would be considered a high prana food because an apple is directly from the tree. And if you bite into it, you're getting full nutritional value, meaning you're getting the full life force energy and vitality that that apple offers to you and you're consuming it which is directly going into your cells and feeding your body what it needs if you consume something like applesauce even if it's like a healthy organic applesauce or whatever it's a highly processed food meaning that the components that give that apple its life force energy to feed you have been tampered with and a lot of it has been removed by the time that it becomes applesauce it has been stripped of majority of what gives it that life force energy that is essential for our body. 
So it's not going to feed into our system the same way that a raw apple would. So to put it simply, high prana foods are the ones that are going to feed our vitality, feed our life force energy and make us glow from the inside out. Low prana foods are the ones that steal our energy and don't give us anything. It creates, it's almost like putting something dead in your body. So you're going to feel dead and look dead versus something that's brimming with life and nutrients and putting that inside of your body. And this feeds into our spiritual and emotional state. So if you're feeling empty and lethargic and not happy with your life or not confident, your dietary habits are a huge factor in this. And I highly recommend that you can take baby steps, but I highly recommend starting to incorporate more whole foods into your diet. Slowly but surely, change takes time and that's okay but definitely incorporate more high prana foods into your diet. Once again, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if this resonated with you, if you took anything from this video so you don't miss future videos like this one. I would love to have you here. And once again, don't forget to head down to the link in my description to take advantage of Ana Luisa's biggest sale of the year and get your forever jewelry pieces or gifts for your family, gifts for your loved ones up to 35% off, okay? Be sure to take advantage of that using the link in the description. But until I see you in the next video, thank you so much for being here. Adios.